Hi guys, these are our notes about simplifying rational expressions. This is our new digital notebook. So you wanna go ahead and put your name on it, on the cover. You wanna to go to slide number five and fill in your table of contents. It's simplifying rational expressions. I just couldn't fit expressions on slide six and seven. So this little PDF is um, on Google Classroom if you wanted to use it and fill it out or you just use a piece of paper, hand write them. So for our uh, first unit in unit 2B, we're going to simplify rational expressions. Um, at the end, we want to be able to answer the question, how are simplifying monomials and polynomial expressions different? How do you check for invalid values? So make sure you title your paper. First, we're going to talk about monomials. So when we talk about monomials, um, that means there's no plus and minus signs, basically. Okay, so it's kind of what you need to remember about monomials are going to be, you know, terms. There's going to be no plus or minus signs. Okay, so for your problems with monomials, that might look something like AB over AC, okay? If something is the same on the top and the bottom of your fraction and they're being only multiplied together, there's no plus or minus signs, you can actually just cancel them out and you would just be left with B over C. As simple as that, right? So here's how you do these problems. You're gonna make a factor tree for the coefficient. Coefficient, remember, is the number in front. And you're gonna list your variables to match the exponents. Then cancel common factors in the numerator and denominator. All right, so we're actually gonna go do an example of this. So you're gonna wanna grab your unit 2B workbook. We're not done writing on this page, but you're gonna grab your unit 2B workbook and you're going to go to example number one on page number nine. So this is on page nine. We're gonna do a couple of examples right now that are just monomial problems, okay? All right, so for our first problem, example one on page nine, it says simplify the rational expression 2x over eight by eliminating any common factors found in both the numerator and denominator. So it says to rewrite the original expression as a product of two expressions. We're not really gonna like, kind of like use their steps that they're kind of using. We're gonna kind of go ahead and use our own. So the way that I go about it is I usually make a factor tree and then just list our variables to match the exponent. So um, two and X, two can't be broken down any further. So that basically on the top is just two times X. The number eight though, you can break down. Eight is um, two times four, right? And then two is prime. And then four breaks down into two times two and those are both prime. So eight is really just two times two times two. We broke down its little prime factors. So what you would do now that it's all broken down is you just cancel common factors that are the same on the top and the bottom. So there's a two on top, two on the bottom, we can cancel. Anything that's left over, we just go ahead and multiply it back out, and that is our answer, x over 4. Let's go do another, uh, two more examples of this, actually. Example 2 says simplify the rational expression 2 over 8x by delimit eliminating any common factors. So kind of similar to the last problem. So on the top is a number 2. That one can't really be factored, so we just keep it as a 2. On the bottom, the number eight, we actually did that one earlier. Two times two times two is what gives you eight. And then there's also an X, there's only one. If something's the same on the top and the bottom, we cancel. So two times two over two would cancel each other out. Now that we've canceled everything on top though, what do we put on the top of our fraction? On the bottom, we have two times two times X, which is just four X. But on the top, there's really just a one because on top there's two times one and we, you know, leave the one on the top. Okay, one more of monomials. So we gotta skip all the way down to our very last problem, example five. 
Okay, so again, the way that it works is you're gonna take your coefficients, make factor trees, take your variables, list out as many as your exponent, cancel as much as you can, multiply whatever is left over. So on top we have the number 12, so I'm gonna make a factor tree for the number 12. It doesn't matter which numbers you start with, if you do two and six or three and four, you'll end with the same thing. Two times six is 12, two is prime, six is two times three, those are both prime. The number on the bottom is four, so I'm gonna make a factor tree for four. That's really just two times two, and those are prime. So on top, I have 12, which is two times two times three. Then I have x squared. That means I have x times x. That's how many x's I have is two. Then I have y to the fifth, which means I have five y's. One, two, three, four, five. And then on the bottom, I have four, which we already broke down into two times two. X means I just have one X, and Y squared means I have two Y's. And then if anything's the same on the top and the bottom, I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel. So two on top, two on bottom, cancels twice. X cancels on top and bottom, and then two of my Y's. So I just multiply whatever I have left over. So three times X times Y times Y times Y is just three X Y cubed. On the bottom, everything canceled, so that's just my answer, okay? You only have one homework problem that's a monomial, so if you wanted to go to page 13, pause the video. The only problem on your homework tonight is number 13, problem number one is the only one that's monomial. This is the only ones you can use this for, okay? The rest of them are going to be polynomials, and we're gonna talk about how to factor those. So let's go back to our little notes page. Okay, we're gonna talk about how to factor polynomials, okay? So polynomials, you're going to, um, polynomial expressions, what you're gonna do is you're going to try to factor them, okay, until you get your little parentheses like x minus a over x minus b over x minus a times x minus c. So the difference between uh, the monomial problems and the polynomial problems is that the polynomials are going to have plus and minus signs, okay? The monomials did not have plus and minus signs, the polynomials will. So once you factor them, you're gonna end up with parentheses, and only if the parentheses are the same in the top and the bottom, that's when you're able to cancel them out. So there's an x minus a on top and an x minus a on the bottom, so you're actually able to cancel them. So that would leave you with just x minus b over x minus c. You cannot, cannot, cannot cancel these x's. Since they are, I say they're holding hands. They're holding hands with b and they're holding hands with c. You cannot break them apart. So what you're gonna do is just factor each polynomial. And cancel any factors. That are the same in parentheses. Okay. Um, one thing that we didn't talk about with our last problems is something called extraneous solutions. Okay, extraneous solutions. They might call them invalid, restricted. They all mean the same thing. It's just x values that cause the denominator to equal zero. Okay, we can't have zero in the denominator. You're not, x values, oh, dang it, I messed up. Don't write that down. X values that cause the denominator to equal zero. So you're not allowed to divide by zero. It's okay to have zero on the top, but no, you cannot have zero on the bottom. You can't divide by zero. If you tried to plug in your calculator, it'll say invalid. If you try plugging on Desmos, you can't divide by zero, okay? So we're gonna, before we do some examples, we're gonna talk about um, factoring polynomials. I have this little like factoring flow chart. So this little factoring flow chart, we're gonna talk about how it works. This is just so you guys know like how to factor things because 
uh, um, on our practice that we did yesterday, I told you like which type, like each slide was a different type. You're gonna have to decide how to factor it yourself, okay? So the very first thing you should always do when you're trying to factor a polynomial is you always factor out the GCF first. Okay, always start with the GCF. Not everything's going to have a GCF, so you don't always have to worry about that, but you do wanna check for one first. Then the next thing you wanna do is you have to ask yourself how many terms are there? Cause that's gonna help you decide how you're going to factor. So how many terms does it have? Okay, factor a GCF, GCF first and then decide how many terms it has, okay? I'm gonna zoom in so this first box is our biggest box and this is if you have two terms. If your original problem is a difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared, those are the ones that just you square root and square root and then you get a plus b, a minus b. Or you could have the uh, sum or difference of cubes, okay? So those ones you take the cube root, cube root, then you square the first piece, square the last piece, multiply the two together in the middle. And then if it was a difference of cubes, the only difference is that the plus and minus of the first two signs switches. So if you have two terms, those are the only ways that you could factor. You've already done a GCF. Okay, you already did the GCF. If it is a difference of two squares, you factor it, you know, square root, square root. If it's a difference of cubes or sum of cubes, you cube root, cube root, and then follow the identities. The next one is if you have three terms, if it's after your GCF, if it's in the form of AX squared plus BX plus C, then you're gonna go ahead and use the snowflake to factor. And the last one is something we didn't practice yesterday, but we had this on our like cubic um, test. Um, if you have four terms, you're going to factor by grouping, which is the one where you group the first two together, take out the GCF, take the second two together, take out the GCF. If the parentheses are the same, that's one factor, and then use the GCFs to make the other factor. Okay, so this is our factoring flowchart. You always start with the GCF first, then you ask yourself how many terms are there, and then you go to one of these ways to factor. Okay. All right, let's go do, I think there's two more examples, so not too many, and then most of your homework problems, this is on page 10 of our little workbook, most of your homework problems are going to be like this one, these two. Okay, so example three, we're gonna factor, you always start with the GCF first. So I look at the numbers X and minus five, okay? Is there anything that factors out of there? No, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put parentheses around those two pieces to show me that they go together. You can't break them apart, you can't separate them. On the bottom, okay, I have x squared minus three x minus 10. So I look for a GCF. Is there anything that divides into x squared, negative three x, and negative 10? No. So then what I have to do is I have to look at how many terms there are. One, two, three, three terms. So that means I'm gonna to try to factor using snowflake. When I use snowflake, I multiply a, which is one, times c, which is negative 10, that goes on top. b goes on the bottom, that's negative three, and then I put my ax on top, which is just x and x. So if two numbers that multiply to give me negative 10, but add to negative three. So my things that multiply 10 are one times 10 and two times five. Since it's a negative, that means one of these numbers has to be negative. So it's either negative one or negative 10 or negative two and five or positive two and negative five. Which one of those adds to negative three? Well, the two and the negative five. So these two little fractions are my answers. I don't even have to like simplify anything. I just get x plus two over x minus five. And then I look to see if there's anything that's the same on the top and the bottom. In the parentheses, there is x minus five, x minus five, so they cancel. Everything canceled on the top, so that's just a one, and on the bottom, it's just x plus two. All right, on the other problems, I didn't talk about extraneous values, but here's how you find extraneous values, what x cannot be equal to. This problem's actually gonna have two of them. What you do is you look in these parentheses down here and you say, what numbers would make zero? What would 
make zero, only in the denominators. You do pre-canceling. If you look in this first one, it says x plus two. Well, minus two would make zero, so that's an invalid restricted value. And the second parentheses, five minus five would be zero, so you say x cannot be equal to five. So extraneous values are things that would make zero in your denominators. So like, for example, number two, what would make x a zero in the denominator would be zero, because four times zero would be zero. What would make zero an example number five in your denominator? You would say x can't be equal to zero because four times zero times y squared would be zero. And you say y can't be equal to zero because um, four times any number x times zero squared would just be zero. And you're not allowed to have zero in the denominators. Example number one didn't have any extraneous solutions because there was no x in the denominator. So x could be whatever it wants. All right, last example. Example four says simplify the rational expression x minus three over three minus x. Okay, x minus three, you look for a GCF. Is there anything that divides into x and negative three? No, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in parentheses. They're holding hands, they're stuck together. You can't break them apart. And then I look at three minus x. That's also um, holding hands. There's no GCF or anything I can't um, factor out. But one thing I do notice is that um, I want to rearrange them. I like to put my x in the front. It would be negative x plus 3. If you look at your two pieces right here, you notice that the first one has a positive x and, the, and a negative 3, and the other one has a negative x and a positive 3. They're opposites. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to factor out a GCF from the bottom of negative 1. So I'm going to factor out a negative 1 from the bottom piece. Okay, so I divide both things by negative one. That changes my negative x to positive x, my positive three to negative three. And voila, now I actually have an x minus three on top and on the bottom, which just leaves me with a one on top, a negative one on the bottom, which one divided by negative one is negative one. So what you need to know about this type of problem, what happens here is that if you have opposites, like this one has a positive x and a negative x, positive, or negative three, positive three, the top and the bottom are opposites, like the signs are switched, all you have to do is take out a negative one, and then that will allow you to cancel them. This one does have an extraneous solution, just one extraneous solution. If you look on the bottom, what would make zero here? Ne uh, three minus three would be zero, so we say x cannot be equal to three. So the rest of your homework problems on page 13 are all polynomials. You have to factor using the flowchart. You cannot just cancel things out. They're holding hands. So you're going to do 1 through 10 on page 13. Before that, you should probably go put your notes into your slides presentation. So slide 6, the notes and the flowchart go on slide 6. Page number 9 goes on slide 7. And page number 10 goes on slide 7 on the right hand side. So you want to go get those into your notebooks and then you can go work on your homework page 13. Thank you.